definitely, for sure. All right, I'm going to switch over the full screen draft. I'll only switch if you guys in chat say heart monster or heart monster because without them, we wouldn't have this event. All right, I'm assuming you're going to give us a lot of hearts and a lot of monster loving. So I'll switch the draft over. You can get the full screen experience here. And, uh, yeah, I'm curious uh, what the priority is going to be even for the Death Prophet. You know, you have the opportunity to pick it up first, but it does leave out the opening for it to get insta-countered by not banning the AA. Maybe they decide to throw Death Prophet somewhere else if they're going to, like, really, really hard counter it. Um, yeah, or we'll have to see. Position, four, four position with another core tusk. Yep. Although, uh, that's not... <laughs> I don't know if Fury is going to pull out the, uh, the, like, ridiculous core tusk. Maybe maybe for fun. Maybe they just say, okay, you know what? You do this to us, or we can we can play that game. That's possible. Yeah, what is this? They banned techies. I don't know if Fury are known to pull out a lot of techies, but they give the respect anyways. Uh, and then they pull out a Marana. That, that's a fun little pick. It doesn't really, it's not really screaming like we're getting this Marana as a counter. Normally you see her kind of picked up early on when you're going against like Chen's or, or something like that, but here they, they value it. I know I've seen Chris Luck in the past play mid lane Marana occasionally. Maybe yeah. it's something they're thinking about. Sure. Maybe it's like, uh, as well as, uh, since he's side laning, Maybe what they're going to do is they're going to get him one of these like mid laners that can also play in a side lane uh, that's also like early game oriented. And to me, that screams Marana. Like I, f I feel like you're you hit the nail on the head. I, I really do think this is a Chris Luck Marana just because all of, all of the uh, the factors kind of line up. You know, it would mm -hmm. be perfect for him. She's a pretty good spirit vessel candidate too. So yeah. someone who could pick it Whisper up and, and deal with the it. deal with the death prophet that would just be nice to have. So yeah, for sure. They may that have already like committed. I don't know where this Nyx Assassin is going to go, but uh, I doubt they can kind of squeeze in something nice, like the like the Shadow Demon or something that could uh, make things even sweeter for Marana or a cute little Ember Spirit pickup, because I know we've, we've seen those chain Marana combos from time to time. Kunkka yeah. as the potential mm. response and could be our new mid laner to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against that Marana, if so be. Uh, mm. Now leaves a bit of a question mark for that Death Prophet whether it's going to be off lane or support or what have you, uh, something already a bit fishy in the air here. Yeah, something's up. Something's up for sure. Because I, I, I don't feel like you're going to pick your mid laner like this when Beast Coast could pick a Necro. They could... Yeah, okay, we're just going to go with the Earthshaker again. All right. Looked pretty good last game. Right, Whisper. I mean, especially in the hands of Whisper, it looked pretty damn dominant, and yeah. it's looking like it will be another Whisper Earthshaker. Their lanes are pretty transparent. If that is going to be the case, which could work against them as the draft does progress, but uh, I mean, I can't really fault Ten them just based on the last game performance. It was really, really strong. But they're going to go with the Slardar here, another pick we don't get to see all too often, but uh, okay. you know, something that could keep tabs on the Nyx Assassin. Uh, just someone to jump in, uh, work as a bash brother, if you will, along with the tusk. That could definitely be a pretty juicy pairing in its own right. Um, and just, you know, fun. You don't see it a whole lot. Thought. Helps them take down Roche that much faster. I imagine their offlane pickup. Ulti. Oh, Death Prophet ulti. Yeah, very good there, yeah, too. Lots, lots of good stuff. But we still don't know what's going mid for Furia. It could, be, could honestly be either of these two heroes or even their last pick. And same goes for Beast Coast. We don't know necessarily what the mid laner is. And Beast Coast have the last pick. So if they see something that's a really good mid matchup here, if this last pick reveals what the mid actually is, yeah. then we'll probably see some sort of counter. Ooh. God, they're just digging down the hero barrel now and just like, you know, I haven't seen this one in a while. Let's throw out the old Lone Druid. I feel like you just picked Necro here again, right? Did it get banned? No, I mean, it, you you have Necro, which destroys the Lone Druid bear that's got high HP. It destroys a Kunkka mid. It would destroy a Slardar. Yeah, it it's is. just too easy. Like, it's, it's such an easy Necro game against any of these heroes. You cannot lane a hero against Necro that's going to do well. You have to lane, like, lane the DP, but then you, then you have a... Uh core or you have a support tusk kunkka that's which obviously a, they're not going to do so that's a five dp yeah all right okay duster takes the dp so that's definitely a five dp mini is going to take the kunkka mid lane whisper on the marana it's an off lane marana. it's a mid lane earth shaker potentially and no 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 it could be a mid lane necro like last game yeah i think it's mid necro uh, uh side lane earth shaker 
ideally against the Slardar, and then Marana, I think, can lane pretty pretty okay against the Laundry. You just, like, poke the bear. What's better together, Earthshaker AA or Earthshaker Nyx Assassin? I mean, they all seem okay in their own way. It all sounds good. Yeah, Marana, sounds Marana good. AA, Marana Nyx, maybe one of those two. What's the matchup that, that's going to be better for them to go against? Uh, hmm. I guess if it's going to be potentially a side lane lone druid, you would probably want the maybe AA Marana kind of lane against that. That wouldn't be, I guess, too shabby. Yeah, to just like both of them can poke the bear. Yeah. And then the Nyx can kind of set up just occasional stuns for the for the Earthshaker or the other way around. Like those two heroes. Honestly, I feel like Earthshaker is gonna be pretty self sufficient in any of these in any of these lanes because if you put the bear on them, you just stun the bear and run away. Uh, Kunka, I mean, that's obviously going to be mid Kunka. Slardar, it's hard to bash, to chain bash the Earthshaker because he can just stun the ground and then run yeah. away from you. Oh boy. All right. Well, based on what we've seen already, it's kind of hard to tell just based on the draft on paper. Who would you get for game number three on this one? I'm going to go Beast Ghost. Just, just given, uh, given, you know, the previous game, uh, how they looked when they swapped their roles around and the fact that we have DK on this Necro again. And I believe it's it's as close to a perfect Necro game as you can get. I uh, got to say I agree with you. Based on the last performance we saw from Beast Coast, some of their best showings for the event so far. Uh, you know, DK's Necro looked pretty damn good. It looked very ballsy, but my god, he could definitely just push the hero to the limits of what was available. And uh, they have a pretty favorable laning set of matchups here. And just based on the early uh, movement, it seems pretty on par with what we were expecting. Uh, with Sexy Fat Heiko likely being a, a, layer, a lane pairing, could be matched up against the Nyx and Earthshaker. Obviously, for now, they're putting the extra support to the uh, adjacent lane to try to, you know, get the outposts, get the bounties going. But this could be a troublesome laning phase for Furia here. Uh, really, all three so. lanes could be troublesome. I think so. I think that I think they should win all three lanes on Beast Coast, uh, and um, unless there's uh, some sort of a tri lane scenario that that happens, which is possible, and that's going to guarantee that they win one lane. But you know, do you really want to tri lane a Slardar? Do you really want to tri lane a Lone Druid? Like, not none of these heroes are your traditional tri lane cores that you really yeah. you really care to to play with. It's it's a little bit weird. All right, some Satanic symbols being drawn on the map, or is that the? Uh, <laughs> No, that's definitely the. I think that's the satanic symbol or whatever. That's sat yeah. Okay, that one's the 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 Jewish one, right? That's the, the um, Star of David. Star of David, right? Or just you know, pen pen was it a pen dragon, right? Not pen dragon, pen pentadragon, <laughs> pentagon, <laughs> some pen pentagram, 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 pentagram. That's the pen dragon. Uh, we don't say that name around here. Uh, we don't say yeah, that name around here. That son of a gun. That son of a. They don't talk about that guy. I don't know who that. Guy. What, Ice Frog is, is king. Is, is, Ice Frog yeah, is legend. Ice Frog is the one true prophet. We all know that. Uh, unfortunately, another little stutter step in a, in a hiccup. I was looking over the supports on the side of Beast Coast, and, you know, they've just totally abandoned the headdress. Right, orange cannot draw. That is, uh, you do you, you do not get to draw anymore. Hiko. What is he drawing? Like fourth grade I, I, bathroom I, graffiti? <laughs> it, really, it really looked like it. Anyway, I'm sorry. I just, I had to call him out for that. Everybody else could draw the, the pen dragons and pentagons and whatever and mm -hmm. jesus he could not now i was just uh, acknowledging there's no headdress meta here for beast coast or bassy meta at all unless that's a uh ring of protection awaiting no he's going for buckler valuing the defense anticipating that they're probably going to eat some shots from the lone druid or something and knowing marana uh just wants the little bit of an extra armor boost i suppose they'll you know, uh, beef it up a bit this uh this buckler it, it's it's a really important note for for any pubbers out there while we're paused that this buckler is the only one of these starting items that has not been nerfed since 7.25 the recipe cost was reduced the armor was increased from 2 to 2.5 and these other items these headdresses these basiliuses they have all been nerfed like once mm -hmm. or twice for each of the items so i think if there's one item that you're going to start with still from that kind of regen item uh meta it's it's buckler like, this item is still incredibly value for its cost. Yeah, can definitely make you and your lane partner that much more durable and deceptively strong, too, uh, for the opponents when they think they can kind of confidently dive. Uh, on the other side, it's kind of the same here. Even Duster, you know, not picking up a headdress, went more like a mango and some 
extra bit of regen sustain, whether it be for himself or his lane partner. Heiko uh, went went the oof on his tusk. So at least for these two teams, they're 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 done and over with the headdress bassy meta, and they're gonna commit with the, something a bit different. Uh, I feel like the 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 read on it's pretty correct. I'm I'm a, I mean we already talked about this, but I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of these, you know, bracers and quelling blades and tangos and these old, older kind of meta items just because how many patches do they have do these bassies and headdresses have to get nerfed before people will stop building them? Like how many patches? Really? 5 4 I don't imagine they can do much more nerfing to it unless you're like at that point you're all in on that item and then maybe you can't afford anything else at all. And at that point, it just feels way too much of a gamble. They're already losing out on, like, maybe one extra consumable when they commit for it. Like, you don't get that branch or you don't get that little extra clarity that could help you in the lane. Yeah. So. Uh, a couple more disconnects, a couple more reconnects here. Routing and the internet seems to be a bit of a problem for these teams. They're trying to get things uh, in order as best they can before we get underway to game number three. Again, this is the... Last day of group stage action. Starting tomorrow, we'll go into playoffs. I'll be back at it again tomorrow, I believe, joined by Demon, and we'll start playoff action. I don't know exactly what the schedule is and who's playing first or second or third, and if it's just going to be two best of threes to start off tomorrow, and if it's an upper bracket or lower bracket, uh, I'm hoping to get that information a little bit later and hopefully can share that with you. Oh, no, actually, I see it here. Look at that. Schedule for tomorrow uh, tomorrow, our first match, which starts at the same time, 1 p.m. PDT, is going to be Quincy Crew versus Business Associates. So that does confirm that Quincy did select Business Associates with their first seed. And the second match tomorrow is going to be Crazy versus EG. Tomorrow is an incredibly hype day of Dota. We're going to see both upper bracket matches tomorrow. So that should be hype. And then the lower bracket is what? The two, uh, the fifth and sixth place yep. teams? That would be Cloud9 and Thunder Predator. That's a really good one, too. That's mm -hmm. a really good one because C9 is, uh, you know, they started basically getting beat by every single team, and then they started beating every single team, so they're on a high. And Starting with Predator, EG. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's just nuts. What a story. Uh, and then Thunder Predator probably should be in the in the you know upper bracket if it weren't for the unfortunate internet issue so that mm -hmm. team very solid team uh can both c9 and thunder predator in my opinion are contenders for potentially like winning the whole thing from the lower bracket so very excited uh yeah super excited to see those playoffs kick off tomorrow we have unfinished business today though both these teams unfortunately will not be able to participate in the bracket but i appreciate them stepping up and uh, showing up. It, obviously, this only matters for placement between 7th and 8th. The prize money is even the same, but pride, right? You got to play for pride. Bragging rights. Maybe the pubs later tonight to say, remember when I beat your ass on stream earlier with Chris Lux Tuck, Tusk? Damn. <laughs> yeah, I won with <laughs> Carrie Tusk. Come at me, bro. I'm excited to see his Earthshaker this game. Not going to lie. I'm curious how he builds it. If it's just, you know, as a core and he gets the essentials early on like we saw from whisper or if he wants to do some crazy old school right click carry or shaker build i, I could see it i imagine he'll go like daedalus armlet begins. sort of thing but I, he, of course you need a blink or maybe yeah. eggs we'll see all right bounties split a piece 2v2 chris luck takes to the high ground but heiko's there waiting for him a little fissure to block out sexy fat from pursuing but chris luck can eat a lot of damage from that annoying tag team and that Oove just slowly walking him down. Does have six tangos, does have a salve. They're cutting him off. They can get him, oh, baby. Oh, my goodness. They're going to catch him. Oh, oh, no. He has the bash. He has the bash. Oh, he, oh, he bashes him. Oh, my goodness. Press the Crip Swarm. A very long dragged out kill when he gets it. How did he have two bashes already? Where did he get that? If I'm Chris Luck, I'm flaming the guy that gave him bashes. Or maybe, maybe it was Chris Luck. This is insane. Or maybe was that's... he hitting neutral creeps on the way or something? I don't, yeah, I don't know. No, 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 that, no, that's no, so... There's no, neut no neutrals. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's... I think he did get it from Chris Locke from fighting at the room. <laughs> that's so funny. Came Arrow, stun, bottom lane. Early pressure on the analog. One more right click. All right. They get one themselves. Taking down a pretty precious core. Obviously getting the first blood bonus is that much nicer for Furia. But all right. Look at Beast Coast. Firing right back. 
Yeah, they're straight up trilaning this. They are. This they, is sweaty. They, 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 yeah, I mean, Chris Luck, more than happy up here, I guess, to CS in front of his tower. Although I say that, and he has a sentry blocked easy camp. So. Oh, they're going to try him too, though. Or they're switching it up. Nope, Analog comes to the top lane, and they're going to send Sexy Fat down below to a lane they were hoping to kind of get. Go chasing down, get some muscle back a bit. And yeah, this is going to be very annoying to deal with, even for Sexy Fat. They're uh, doing a nice job stepping away, trying to give as much solo XP to Whisper as possible on that Marana. Uh, top lane, Chris Luck, uh, <laughs> spotted out by Duster. Trying to get as close as he can to still get a piece of that XP pie, but obviously going to be under constant threat where possible. Yeah, he's having a, having a rough one, and as a... Uh... Non offlane player, he may not know how to properly deal with this. Who knows? We'll see. I mean, he's an excellent player, so I'm sure he can figure it out. But oh, Mini misses the torrent. I mean, DK just kind of turns and faces the Kunkka head on, anticipating that the torrent will not be in that spot. And he makes the right call, avoids what could have been the first kill in that mid lane. Missed arrow bottom. Heiko going to be able to slip away from that. These teams are aggressive, man. They are looking for those kill opportunities and trying to assert their dominance early on in the laning phase, but, you know, Furia happy with this lane swap up, especially for top lane. Duster can do as he pleases, doing side pulls, and Analog just goes crazy in the lane itself, and, well, I, I admit, I missed that one. It's Stinger getting the last hit, but him and company get the finish onto Heiko, and they're not done yet. Now following forward, looking to go for Sexy Fat. They get a good arrow. Need one more right click. One more. Whisper. No, I can't quite get close enough. A little bit of a sprint, and the space is created. He considered leaping. You could see it. He could very much considered diving there. Oh, mid lane trouble. Jenkins here. DK. Confident swagger going to be uh, taken down as Heiko returns from death on the bottom lane. Jumps right to mid lane and they hit the necro. If I recall correctly, I, I believe Mini is a big Kunkka player. Um, I, I, I recall hearing people like refer to his to his Kunkka. So. I think I think this is a, a comfort pick for him. Okay. And so even though he's in this matchup, which I think Necro should do very well in, it seems like he he knows the matchup quite well. Uh, and he goes, he's still there. He's yep. still there. DK not ready for the Tusk to still be hanging around. This will warrant not one but two different rotations. One will be canceled out. The AA makes it, but DK goes to the high ground on the other side. Oh. And not going to be able to make it away. AA will step into the lane and take the solo XP. That's back-to-back -back takedowns on your DK Necro, though. You know what? When, when you die twice after TPing like that, I almost feel like they should just set your death timer to be the TP timer. Because you have to walk back to lane either way. <laughs> right. Uh, I do catch all that action bottom lane. You know, this Nyx Marana pairing has done a lot of work already. Uh, just the Nyx stun into Arrow, and then they just chase them down. Yeah, Whisper is a famous Marana player, famous for playing the hero even when it's completely garbage. <laughs> famous for just playing it a lot, not famous for the execution. All right, all right, we'll see if he can uh, definitely put that feather in his cap in this game. Currently, level four does the 2 1 1. Always curious to watch different Maranas and how they level, considering the new changes that have happened in recent patches. I know, for one, the arrow damage being amplified a bit. I've heard some players talk about wanting to level up that arrow to get even more maximized out of that damage. Here, a fight for the bounties. Whisper connects with said arrow really nicely. A full duration stun allows them to get the cleanup kill onto Heiko and Beast Coast inch ahead now, four to three. The new Marana arrow feels really, really nasty. Getting stunned by it is, is very frustrating. It kind of feels like you get hit by some pure damage ability. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Duster's here. And they get another kill. This is the third straight takedown on DK in the mid lane. Ah, the uh, classic Death Prophet 5 gank. Right? Works every time. I wonder if... I was just going to say if he's going to get some points going into Silence. Just picks up the point now. And look at it already go to work. Silence there onto the Earthshaker. They roll on in. But it's obviously a bit over aggressive here. They feel confident. Kunk is level 6 now. They got the boat. Hoping to posture up strong and get some early damage on that precious mid tier one tower. But DK returns and uh, that plan is going to be halted a bit. But it warrants the attention of Chris Luck having to rotate to that mid lane. And Analog is just going to keep farming up. 
He's having a decent time up here after a bit of a rough start. Oh, red monster. Goes for the top rune, denies it, but it does cost him his own life. The second you walk down that ramp and a tusk is around, he's going to block you out from that ramp and, and you're stuck. AA, not a particularly great hero either at getting away from a tusk. Can't get away right. from anything. That man sucks yeah, at walking out from yeah. trouble. He has no way of heavy movement. He's just hoping that he gets levels and can shoot Jays from the outside. His bottom, it could be Sexy Fat in trouble yet again. This dynamic duo of Marana and Nyx just continue to put in the work, and it's just so troublesome for the Slardar. It's at this point that I almost feel like he should just go lane with the Lone Druid. Like, just go break down the laning stage, say, okay, I'm not gonna sit down here and just put myself in, in like, kill threshold mm -hmm. for this kill combo. Just, let's just take towers. Let's just play the game. But he does head back down. This is quite dangerous. Yeah, top, they are looting, they're pulling out a lot of pressure from Furious side, but nobody from Beast Coast is answering that tier one pressure. And instead, they will address Sexy Fat once again on the bottom lane. They have the arrow connection. He's trying to swim his way out. Stinger thirsty, though. Look at this man. They're committing in deep. Feeling like there's not going to be any rotation. There's not going to be any help, but they'll continue to chase. If he gets a little bit more mana, he could set up the stun into the arrow, but not. he's, he's not going to have the mana. He's going to fall a bit short. They will take the tier one tower. Meanwhile, back at mid lane, they've caught out Chris Luck. And they slap him down. Man, Hiko and Mini are owning in this game. Like they're they're just finding all the kills. These are, this are, that's a core Earthshaker too. That's a that's a carry mm -hmm. that's dying. Not good. You know, for while they're getting a lot though, you could say the same for you know, Whisper and Stinger in the bottom lane here. Oh, I say that, but I might have just jinxed Stinger. He unfortunately does miss that stun. And uh, Sexy Fat will make it away from any potential threat, but the bomb lead pressure does continue. Same can the be said is, for analog top. Go ahead. Marana's not really particularly great at pushing, whereas this lone druid is more than adept at taking your towers. So, tower is under attack, you know, not the worst hero to get very farmed, the, the Marana. But... For sure, when it, when it comes to hitting the towers itself, the as we see Whisper able to string together another kill there. Oh! Stun, but they still get the X pull back into the boat. And oh, as she tries to go for the TV mini, gets in good position to slam her down with that cleave. And the chase is on. Carapace stun, though, from Stinger stops them in their tracks, and they put their focus onto Red Monster because he's looking like a sweet little icy treat. He's trying to taunt himself out of this one. Torrent misses. Iko, six more seconds for the shards. Is he going to be too far away for this one? They still want it. They say, there's no way you're going to get away with this. There's no way. You must pay. And they do take him down. You know, when he's taunting like that, you definitely got to dive him. You know, yeah. you got <laughs> to put him in his place. <laughs> you can't let him do that to us. He can't swag on us like he's getting away. No yeah. way. Uh, means that they can follow it up with a very good tier one tower in mid lane. Very precious tower. And a good position for Furia to be in. You know, I have uh, really good moves for the mid lane with how well Kunkka has been able to walk out from that laning phase, 74 and 13. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, trouble for Sexy Fat at the bottom, but, you know, Lone Druid has been just coasting through. So Furia really walking away from the laning phase, feeling pretty strong here. And uh, now we can see trouble. Necro and AA go to the high ground, not before getting silenced up. They surround Duster. Duster, though, gets the snowball, rolls out. They have a boat for the Necro. It connects. They can't finish him off. A big stun return there. And they quickly lose out to Chris Luck walking in with a dunk. Hits it home. Big damage. And they're going to be able to clean out the Necro, the Marana to fall. Chris Luck trying to clean up the rest. Moving in. Can't quite get any of those big juicy targets. The Lone Druid and the Kunkka still surviving here. Mini into a corner. Tries oh. to slap down the Golems. The Golems not helping him out in this one. How is this guy going to get away with this? Dude, what is happening? He steps back and clearly just walks damage. away. Chris Luck steps back in with the Fissure. Can't quite get the snipe. And Analog scores the double kill. Arrow not quite there. Mini will go back to base to X himself back. But uh-oh. Not able to come back in time to bail out his comrade Duster. Man, what a ridiculous turn of events. Nice catch of the torrent there. Mini chasing now, Whisper. 
No, no finishing blow. And he got that armlet. Yeah, that's a... That Helm of Iron Will really protected him in that fight. It's like every, every single time Nyx hit him, he would just regen for the damage that Nyx did. So ridiculous. Those pathetic little right clicks. I cannot believe he got away with that, but he did. And, uh, you know, the two prized cores walk away from that battle uh, alive and well. And they still sit at that top of the net worth here. Marana being the, the one hope at the moment for Beast Coast as she tries to finish out that Maelstrom through this bottom lane. Uh, other than that, you know, they do have Stingers level 6. They have Vendetta. They could look for setups on that front. But the chase is on here. Furia just on full aggressive mode. Nice shard block there to catch Chris Luck. Snowball up and over the Ice Blast. Try to go into Chris Luck. Moonlight Shadow, can it bail him out? No, it can't. He's able to get off a couple more stuns, but you know, will not stop his fate. Yeah, that was a six shards, honestly. If he, if he doesn't connect with that, that's just, uh, you know, they, they get the hell out of dodge on Beast Coast. They they snipe the smoke, but Eco carries that. Red Monster, Stinger, sweeping in with the Vendetta. You know, either of these targets not looking so easy. They do have the arrow to follow up, though. Oh, they want DK. They actually snowball over Stinger, and they get the crush onto him, and then he gets silenced up. Oh, poor Stinger. Can't quite get anything off, and misses the stun. Oh, Nyx. Sad times for him in this one. Sexy Fat runs into the corner. Hit up with the cold feet. They finish him off. But DK pays a big price there. Gets sucked on up. Duster, your five position Death Prophet. Putting in work with that Exorcism Soul Siphon. Arrow? Ooh, connects. Finds a connection onto Mini. Can they protect him? They can. They get the roar off. And Mini again runs away with barely any life. Fissure somehow just narrowly misses him. Chrysla commits him with the Echo. Can't quite find the finish. He runs out, and Duster gets him down with the Crypt Swarm. Duster with sweet revenge from that last game. Too many uppercuts from the Tusk. He is wants revenge so bad. And look at him go, man. Double kill for Duster. This boy. He's like, you know, I'm liking this. I'm liking this five-position Death Prophet, not going to lie. It seems pretty good in this game. It's, uh, it's all right. <laughs> I agree with him. Oh, Stinger. He's like, there's no way. I got to get this guy. See you later, Mini. Yeah. That was, what is it? The, ro the Roach's Kiss? Is that what you called it? The Roach's Kiss. Oh, hell yeah. That's exactly what that was. He jabbed down Mini. He's gotten away with way too much, and that's a five times kill streak going to be pocketed by Nyx. You know, Roaches have all sorts of diseases, actually. If you did get kissed by a Roach, it might look something like that. Maybe not as immediate. These days, though. Yeah, you never really know. So keep your masks on tight. As top lane. Nice three-point shot comes in from the AA. Uh, forces Analog to kind of step off a bit, but he does have company nearby. Scan is there, though, from the Dyer. And uh, they know that something fishy is up on that high ground, and just as Red Monster's like, what's going on? He just gets jumped by the Bash Brothers, if you will. Heiko and Sexy Fat just mow him down. And Fury in a good spot. This is the team that was uh, about to forfeit this series. And now here they are in a really strong position. Game number three to potentially take the series. X marks the spot. Pull back Bo onto Chris. Now a snowball to chase. The torrent. And somebody's got to finish that play. And it's going to be Sexy Fat. Uh, Chris Slock not having, not having a great game here on this, uh, this <laughs> core Earthshaker. Yeah, not Does feeling... Not feeling as exciting as the Tusk, but like you mentioned, yeah, has the blink. We'll have to see what kind of big Echo moment is, is awaiting him. It's just about 25 seconds time before that Echo is going to be back up. Looks like Furio have been eyeballing the Roche a bit, but would love to get a kill on the Stinger to make it that much easier. They have the silence and the detection. Just crush him. I mean, tag team plus, what is it, corrosive haze? Good lord. Yeah, with the DP ulti and... Yeah, Please. Roche, well, Roche is also going to go down. They're even committing the exorcism for it. This thing melts. I mean, in the meantime, Beast Ghost will try to get some some safe vision out, but oh god, poor red monster. Arrow, woo! A life-saving arrow for red monster. He's just like, I'll get him with everything I got. Cold feet, ice blast. Chris Luck jumps in. 
they'll get Minnie down while the rest of his team is securing the Roche. Nice bailout. A little bit out of position there, just a little bit. <laughs> Whisper landing the arrow. A very, very thankful red monster. The coach is like, I will never scrutinize your future games ever again. Thank you so much. <laughs> Whisper's just trying to get coach points. That's all he cares right. about in this. He's trying so hard. The mega brown noser over here trying to yeah, absolutely. solidify his spot on the team. I've been performing well every game. And, uh, you know, to his credit, it has been a fantastic couple of games for Whisper, the previous one, of course, uh, being that Earthshaker game. Now, uh, trying to make the most out of this Marana, proving to be a bit difficult, as a lot of it is on her shoulders, being the top net worth for the team. DK not really able to unload as big, as they do get a nice little stun set up on the Duster. And finish off the, D the DP, but that is just that five position DP, and it's gonna cost them Whisper, who is the top net worth. So not a fun exchange for, for Beast Coast at all. And the chase is on. This is for Chris Luck. Chris Luck still holds that Echo, and he's gonna have to keep holding it in the fountain and wait for the high ground defense to use it. <laughs> nice timing from Mini with the with the torrent. Chris Luck actually has a blink, so he could maybe get out of that. Oh, red monster. Oh, where's my that arrow this time? I don't think you're gonna have a bailout this time, buddy. Yeah, it is. Mini gets that kill. DK confident here. He's got Stinger nearby. And they're gonna slap down and send Sexy Fat to the Shadow Realm. And I was gonna say that might force Furia back, but Furia is still happy to swing it out. I guess knowing that the Reaper Scythe is not an immediate threat and with Duster already back into action here, Dual Soul Siphon does a little bit of damage. But once it finishes, they just jump onto the DP and blast her down. All right, Furia kind of handing over a couple of kills here now. Yeah, gives the bear up too. That's a, that's a pretty big deal. 300 gold in XP. That's one thing that didn't get nerfed in terms of gold and XP in the patch. So it's worth a lot in this meta. Bounty. Stinger coming in from the flank. Oh, I guess call a sidestep from Heiko. He's not able to get the stun. But now we're going to see Beast Coast posturing up here. There's that blink echo. Chris Luck. Invis rune. Oh, he got scouted. Radiant. Nice little side scan there. I don't think they're going to want to approach this mid lane, fearing that there could be reinforcements in the dark nearby. And it's probably the best. they got to tighten the reins a bit. They handed over a couple of kills there and uh, opportunity for Beast Coast to inch their way back little by little. It's only a 2k net worth advantage at the Radiant's moment. It does look like you know, top two net worth is in a strong spot, really pushing ahead. But everyone else on Furious side is pretty poor. You know, Sexy Fat yeah. way down there, Duster way down there. You know, that could be a little concerning. Sexy Fat's kind of giving them a, a window into this game here. He, uh, he's not been having a yeah, good game. He had a real rough landing phase. He had to deal with the Nyx Marana lane. Just got stun comboed nonstop and yeah. didn't have the support babysitter to bail him out. Stinger. Oh, they, okay. They Sexy Fat just throws out the stun. Not sure that was intentional or not, but not able to get the catch. Well, Analog will pressure out that top lane. Beast Coast are flirting around the mid lane a bit. They have Stinger back in behind. He's rolling under a sentry, though, and he's been spotted. Snowball back into the X. They got the crush, and they take care of that little roach. You know, sometimes the risk you take as a Nyx moving out in Vendetta trying to scout out opportunities. So, you know, we'll see Beast Coast split these other side lanes, try to distract Fury a bit from, you know, going for closure. And, oh, okay. Pause. Well, Fury are making their way into the triangle now. They've taken top tier two, so they don't need to be playing there too much. They've been kind of playing around that area quite a lot. In fact, that's a big area that Beast Coast have warded. So playing towards this bot triangle area, I think makes a lot of sense. And this is going to let them get this bot tower and also push Beast Coast out of their jungle because it's been a little annoying having this bot lane shoved in so much if you're yeah. Furia. It's not as valuable to Furia to, to obviously go to that bottom lane, but after they've already gotten so much at the top half of the map, I think it's about time they can deal with certainly that tier one and that tier two. It does look like they draw it out on the map as the game plan. As they backpedal though, look at this. They caught out with a nice sentry. The Moonlight Shadow approach from Marana. Whisper leading out the charge there. Probably not the best idea without knowing yet that Furia have totally withdrawn from the area. They're always ballsy to walk up high grounds like that. 
very usually bold. want to have some sort of vision or maybe like maybe like arrow up or something like that but way too much confidence way too much swagger there for Marana to kind of take yeah, that a bit of disrespect oh Didn't red monster don't go out there that is too dangerous i know you Maniac. need to they really want to have vision in that area but it's it will cost you your life uh, obviously hard for them to kind of get out behind i guess i mean stinger's there feels comfortable because he has his own sentry on the ground oh that courier looks good get it get it get it get it get it, get it. it's got a mango oh <laughs> he'll take it on the way back maybe no no he wants to keep his vendetta going just in case they have a setup fight. they're looking for dk Oh, they spotted him. That pesky Nyx. The Yules, but there's the Ice Blast. He does manage to have a pretty good stun, and they will finish off the Tusk. They're jumping from Chris. Catches out two, and it's on to Mini, and they will finish him off with the Reaper Sight. Very nice grab for Beast Coast there. Analog, he's got to go. He TP's out. Not so fortunate. Going to be Sexy Fat. He's hit up with the arrow. He wants Red Monster, though. He's taunting him, and this time he'll get away with it. Triple kill for Whisper. Really nice echo. Uh, also, the setup from the Knicks kind of, you know, it, it looked like he was in a really ballsy position there, maybe trying to just snipe a courier, but he was actually looking to start the fight, and the the clutch carapace that he got off, he, he I, I think it was the DP, he caught the DP with the carapace and the Kunko with the carapace at the same time, so that actually set up for that echo slam. So, very nice play from our little uh, cockroach here. Yeah, I thought they got the jump on him, but uh, the Yules... Oh. Which I assume is his Yules. Yeah, he got his own self Yules off, kind of prolonged things a bit. As you mentioned, the Carapace, the follow-up stun, all held them in that place long enough for Chris Luck to do what he felt like he was waiting to do for a long time. And that's like a pretty decent blink echo setup. He gets what he's asking for, and they're able to blow up the Kunkka and take him out of the fight before he's able to get anything going for himself, uh, the boat or what have you. He has a BKB now. I don't know if he had it in that fight and just blew up before he was able to get it off. But now they have it ready to go. Feeling confident, rushing into Beast Coast Turf. Oh, they spot out Whisper, and they rush in. Silence is there from Duster, and she has nowhere to go. This Tusk Punch plus the Sardar is doing so much damage. It's insane. And they're and this, not a, you know, this is a, this is a four Tusk, too, so. And, you know, the cute little Silence, and Marana has no way to deal with it. No Yules, no BKB, no nothing. She has no way to get out from that trouble. And here we go. To the high ground they go with the exorcism out. Glyph now committed. Bear leading the charge here. Gets the roar off. Puts focus on the Nyx and they'll finish him off. It's Duster claiming up that kill with his exorcism. They're going to lose the bear. Our new one's going to be summoned. And now a buyback going to be forced out from that Nyx. And uh, Necro trying to run in. Gets X back. Are Furia going to totally pull out of this one, or if they're going to see if they can bait Beast Coast back into a, a secondary fight? Looks like the latter. They're waiting on the high ground. Moonlight Shadow, though, do they have vision? DK walks right in there, and uh, Sexy Fat going to get reflected his own corrosive haze on the other side. Ice Blast to fly. A snowball may have dodged it. They able to chunk down Nyx, and now Beast Coast frantic to try to make it back inside. Now that they are down their Nyx, who already died back. DK. Oh, an arrow slips through. Does find the Lone Druid on the back, but not able to bail out DK. Necro. And he buys back too. Oh, man. Beast Coast spending the money here to hold the line. Red Monster goes down next. Man, Duster is just dusting away these players on the support. DP keeps ending up with the kills. Oh, Marana saying ain't so. She leaps right in, gets silenced up, gets bashed and killed, and she is out. 50 seconds. She has no buyback. Just like that. What is going he, on, man? They were hemorrhaging out kills there at the end. Yeah. Beast Coast just trying to chase them out, but Furia were prepared. The bear's doing a lot of work. There, there was a few times where the Necro was very close to being able to get off like a Ghost Shroud or a Yules, but then he would just get bashed. He would get hit by like the Sardar, you know, like the, the Tusk or something like that. He, it was just one of those unfortunate fights where every time he wanted to get off a defensive ability, he was getting bashed or, or something of the sort. Racks down. Oh, jumping from Chris, but he gets roared immediately. Can they take this bear out? Pretty they're, important. They're he, trying. He doesn't have a resummon soon. Yeah. But they want the money. They're not going to get it. Oh, look who's way out front. Stinger. Stinger's chasing. What's he going to set up? 
Oh, got the hit on the bear, got the stun. Chris Luck moves in, huge echo slam. Finishes off the bear, finishes off the lone druid. And they're gonna be looking to go and take the sexy fat too. And they're not done yet. Moving in, they're looking to go for Duster. Duster getting right click. The Maelstrom damage procs continue to go through and they're successful on that as well. It's three kills for Beast Coast on the bounce back. Once again, these uh, this combo between the Nyx Assassin and the Earthshaker just looking really amazing. Uh, as well as the Ancient Apparition. I mean, it's easy to forget about AA because he just sits in Fountain and shoots ults, but it's doing a lot of damage. And Chain Lockdown too, which is important Radiance against these BKBs and Fears and, oh, yeah. and so forth. And now Tower under pressure in the mid-tier 1. I'm looking over Kyria's members, you know, no... No vessels or anything to, to help with the Necro at this time. But maybe they feel that they just have so much overwhelming uh, damage burst that it's something that's not too necessary. We'll have to see if that's something that comes back and bites them or not. But they are starting to get tested a bit. East Coast feeling a bit more confident. As they're moved out past the river now and into the southern half of the map where they know it's free to farm. Yeah, it's good for them to, to get out really sucks to be locked in your base even with that rex they do have an aa who kind of wants to sit in fountain anyway so he's okay with just dragging this wave over and over to the uh Radiant to the fountain in tier force although i say that he's actually heading over to his team i think he's got to get some wards now he's got to get an aa blast maybe into the roche pit here because Furia oh, are doing it they're doing it fast and Radiant there's no chance at all whether they're they know what's going on or not I, they don't dire just used a scan over here, so it doesn't seem like they had any idea that that was going down. Dyer's middle and tower. Kunga has a solar crest. That's interesting. Oh, okay. I, I saw the solar crest. I was like, oh, that must be like Slardar or Tusk, right? But no, it's it's Kunka. Interesting. I mean, Helping, great for the bear. Yeah, I was going to say, just I guess help to enable the bear. I mean, it's a very battle bear kind of a build. Deso, Mask of Madness, and a basher now. They really want to ramp up that, that output. Arrows. He's so patient with hitting these arrows. Like, I would see him fake it a few times before casting it. Um, and he tried to chase him out, but Chris Luck was able to... Uh, not Chris Luck, rather. Um, uh, Whisper was able to leap out and away. Chris Luck's still hiding within the trees. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they, they're scouting. Oh, my goodness. They, have, they actually he has... still have a hunch. He has, spy he has spider legs and TP. He's just... Oh, they're looking for the wraparound. They have Nyx here, too. Oh, and they have that Echo. They have oh, that Echo. Boy. They need vision, though. They this would just, be a they good need to throw Nyx. They need Nyx to, throw, to go in there. Just show himself closely, and die. Look how closely stacked they are. Oh, my God. If Nyx could just get in there. Chris vision. Luck, Chris Luck. He's going in from behind. He's going in. They got the vision on the high ground. He moves in. Big Dunk is going to be there. He's looking to wipe out the black lines. Can he do it? The Lone Druid's still holding strong. The Ice Blast comes through, but not quite enough firepower to get the finish onto Analog. He is going to be good and backpedals a bit. And Furia oh, don't seem too wavered with the opportunity. I mean, they blasted down the Tusk, but he just buys right back. That was so close. Oh. That was so close to being a disaster. Oh, God. Got him with the net. <laughs> yeah. They chase out for Stinger. Oh, boy. All right. Now, Furia charging down this bottom lane. That's going to be so demoralizing for Beast Coast. Now they have no Echo Slam for this defense. The Necro just throwing himself into the fight. Chris Luck will continue to try to stun and slow them down and block the lane out and do whatever he can. And they have the repair kit, so it's it's a pretty good hold. Vinny X's himself. Nah, they can't they can't do anything else without the Marana. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can ask for anything better as far as the approach. I'm quite surprised that you know how how limited damage the Echo was really be able to deliver because it looked like it hit like three right but i think the echo hit like three or four but the aftershock only hit two so mm. they only got the they only got the stun on two which was a problem because then there's just like the bkbs and the yeah. boat and things like that come out and the pipe oh necro he's got the eels though boy it's getting x right back in stinger 
Vendetta's out the front door. And they're creeping forward a bit. That's pretty good silence. Another fissure block. Beast Coast doing all they can to, to hold the line here where possible. Holding out so they have uh, everything ready to go. I mean, Echo's actually about to be back up again. I don't know if Furia have been timing it out, but they're not ready for it. Could catch them by surprise. <laughs> Though, you know, I felt like they were caught by surprise last time and didn't seem to work out too well. Surprisingly, because that was, <laughs> that was like an insane wraparound. Yeah. Thing. That was really cool, but it just <laughs> barely didn't work out. Yeah, only the Tusk. Had to pay the price on that one. Yeah. I mean, he probably crapped his pants. I'd say that, but... You know. But, still you know, he's, he's not too big. He's, he's a very small factor of the, the Furia team right now. And, uh... You know, not too much was lost. And they're doing a good job. Still like sharks in the water, I like to say, as... They're keeping Beast Coast pretty much herded indoors. And uh, with that, they know exactly where they are. Could take most of the farm on the map and just play the economy game here as they're pushed back up to a 9k net worth advantage. Stinger, the only one to kind of go out and poke around a bit. It's a... I think he just put the sword down. No, that ward was already there. He pings Mini. He says, okay, they're, they're faking this out. Mini's not there. But he is heading there now. DK playing very up. Surprisingly, I mean, actually, unsurprisingly, for what yeah. we've seen and yeah. from him, but yeah, this guy, this kid's got some cojones, that's for sure. Oh yeah. Okay, wipes out the wave, heads back inside where he thinks it's safe, which is the right call to make. Had he inched forward, could have been to some trouble. You know, Slaughter though, not able to get a blink, not really going for the blink this game. Wages that they have other ways to kind of start fights off, but no way to immediately jump into action for Furious side of things. Fuels again on the X. Arrow on the bear. All right, Necro. Gets hit with the net. Lotus is it off. They might be able to snipe down this bear, though. And they Ooh, do. The big torrent. But, uh, okay, torrent. Boat is there. Finds some mild connection. Fury is still hesitant to kind of breach in the high ground, though, with that. This could be the second bear to fall, if not careful. Ice Blast finds a couple of targets. Oh, there's the hit from Chris, and it's good. Oh, it's real good. A beautiful follow-through comes out from the rest of his team, and they blast down Mini and company and go on the chase. All right. And Bear as well. That's the resummon. He's useless on analog for 90 seconds. That's even worse than any of the, the kill timers. So might as well be like four kills. Make it five if they get the finish here on the sexy fat. Who says, I got time to stop for some farm, right? No, 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 no. Beast Coast, they are hunting. They are lurking. They are looking to take everything they can, including your name. Chris Luck on a killing spree now after it felt like so much pressure was on him. Now suddenly able to grab another one. And look at Beast Coast firing right back, trudging their way down this mid lane, seeing if maybe they could force out a buyback or something, or at least to get a tier two. Making the most of this opportunity. Oh, Whisper's got double damage. That helps. Oh, boy. Double damage Crystallis. Middle He's a big boy. Oh, 30 seconds? 20 seconds for Kunkka? I think they just even this up. Yeah, they're giving it up. Does, do they have, do they have uh, fortification? No, they do not. This is a Rax. All right, never say die, Beast Coast. This was just about a 10k net worth advantage, and now it's even. Just like that. Yeah, they scout out. They see that Roche is not up yet. May respawn in 41 seconds. Hey, time that. You're a coach, Red Monster. You're just sitting in base. Yeah, do your job. Come on, man. 30 seconds. May respawn Roche. Got to keep vision in that area. Very important for both sides in this game. Chris Luck? Oh, Chris. Gets crushed. Oh, he's going to commit the BKB and try to spiral egg himself out of this. He actually may do it. He did it. He got to the low ground. He got the blink off. And he is getting away with this. Yeah, not how you want to use a BKB, but also he's the carry. He's incredibly important in these fights. So keeping him alive, definitely solid. I mean, he's counter-initiating anyway, so not having the BKB, all that does is that forces him to play his the style that he's been playing for the last 35 minutes, which is okay. 
And aren't spider legs worse now because it's not percentage? It's going to be just flat movement speed stacked on boot movement speed. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's it, as good as it used to be. It doesn't stack with boots, so it's yeah. like a effectively whatever happened to boots is the same as spider legs so i think spider mm. legs on earthshaker would technically be better uh and then you also have the 24 percent movement bonus which is percentage so i feel like spider legs on earthshaker would be better oh he's naturally it's, slower hero i think so Isn't ah. he, he's like he's like what three three hundred a little bit less i guess 300 is considered kind of average yeah if you're 300 the boots change did nothing mm-hmm Literally nothing. All right. Well, I'm sure, they're happy. So we could see, uh, goddamn, the versatility of Spiral Legs to get out of a hairy situation. He uh, counts his blessings in that one. And here we are, back to a more even playing field. Both teams going to be respecting their side of the river and likely looking to keep lanes equalized and look for an opportunity to kind of snag up the ages for themselves where possible. Beast Coast take to the southern half of the map and they'll pressure out from that front. Scouting Roche with the Courier on Duster. It'll respawn in 40 seconds. So pretty decent timing on that. Beast Coast just jabating this bot lane. Chris Luck really utilizing the spider legs. Get himself into position. Yeah, no one taking the bait though. I mean, this is like one of those advantages for Dire, I guess. Especially if you're looking to go for Roche. You can pressure out this bottom lane and Radiant have to really travel far to yeah, deal with it. They do have the benefit of a Kunkka who could just X somebody down there if they wanted to, pressure out that lane and still be around the Roche pit if something were to go down. But looks like only uh you know Duster is necessary to kind of deal with that pushback. We'll have to see if Beast Coast can find their way back into their jungle and over to the Roche side of things because Roche is up now. It is spotted Ooh, and scouted by Theria. And uh oh yes. That's the Ags. What do we give the eggs to? Let's see. Sounds pretty good on Lone Druid for the split push. Uh, Sardar sounds pretty good for the, the pool. Kunkka already has an egg, so it's not going to him. Tusk eggs is a joke. It's not going to Tusk. <laughs> good lord. Uh, Death Prophet's a five. Probably not DP. Yeah. Honestly, you probably just give it to Lone Druid. Yeah. Oh, Duster, I'm pretty sure you didn't mean to do that. Oh, uh, what, what happened? He presses BKB. He has a BKB. He was, <laughs> I think he was trying to ward because he swapped the ward position with the BKB oh, directly you, after he These supports he used it. players, you know, they don't get BKBs too often, so. They don't. They don't. <laughs> Hot key position is not really in the great spot. Man, Duster. Duster is 12, 7, and 11 on a five position death profit. Can we just give that some respect for a moment? That is crazy. Moment of silence for Duster. The god. All right. Cheese. Or, sorry. Aegis picked up by Analog. And he takes that Agnum's Blessing. Got everything. And the cheese. Greedy carry players. God damn. Give me all. Give me everything. <laughs> all right, Analog. You're a standard man. Let's relax. All right, and we'll get a little bit of a pause. But what a position for Furia to be in. Um, they have been tested, though. Beast Coast, I'm kind of surprised they're not able to get themselves into a position where they can really contest that Roche. You know, they do have a means to fight at the Roche. It looks like their Ice Blast was not available but you know with echo available it's like there's there's definitely a lot of threat but well, as we've seen they have such strong high ground defense that i guess they're not worried to to hold the line but with that aegis grab that may have just extended the game you know for another yeah going back to the uh advantage uh you said that you know dyer has this advantage of being able to push in the bot lane but and then and then secure the roche but if you don't have any serious tower threat which beast Coast kind of don't Mm -hmm. uh, they have the Marana, which is okay, but it's very committal to hit the tower with Marana. You kind of have the advantage as Radiant because you want to play the top lane anyway because it's enemy jungle, and then that's directed by the Roche pit. So just because Beast Coast has no real, real way of threatening the tower, Furious just like screw it, I'm not going bot, and then they just move into Roche. Easy pickings. Yeah, that's a fair point. Not not too much on Beast Coast that can kind of chunk down these towers without being a bit of an awkward position. And all right, balls in Furious court. They got the Aegis. They got the smoke. They got all the confidence they could ask for. And here they go in the Beast Coast turf. Stinger just sliding out. They have that ward, but they may not know. If the Roche is not there, 
Lone Druid pushing out the bottom lane. He shows himself there. You know, it could be a bit unsuspecting. But, you know, respect to Beast Coast. They're a bit unnerved and, and waiting on their side in the high ground. Nice to have this bear with the uh, ability to push bot like that now. Yeah. Now that advantage is just completely gone. They can gank the bear, though. Like, it's oh. getting to the point where killing the bear is legitimately uh, a totally, you know, viable strat. If they can get that chance. I mean, now the bear, uh, does the bear, I think, the, does the bear stay alive when Lone Druid dies now with the, ag with yeah. the Agonims? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does stay alive. Pretty sure. <laughs> Yules out. DK. Is going to shuffle his way back inside. Ooh, sidesteps the shard block. Fury and not ready to pursue that one. Very cautious approach here. Got to respect the high ground defense here from Beast Coast, but they do commit the exorcism. A lone Druid Bear eating a lot of damage. Has to get snowballed up. Duster commits the BKB and flies into action here. DK out front. Duster loses his own life dancing around in front. Couldn't quite get any big soul siphons off. Could not sustain himself. And does fall. The Torrent Storm coming out. Just chaos all over the place here as they try to make a hasty retreat. The arrow from downtown. Doesn't find anybody, but Chris Lux on the chase. Gets a block on the bear. Yeah, they get, they're, they're going to kill the bear twice, possibly. Savage roar, but cold feet. And they do slowly burn it down. And, yeah, that's, uh, that's huge. He does not have a bear for 80 seconds. That was two bears. I didn't realize that was two bears. I mean, honestly... There's an argument to be made for putting the Aegis on the bear at this point. <laughs> does, does that work? I've, I don't think I've ever seen that. Does the bear respawn if you put an Aegis on it? You know, that's a great question I've never seen. And uh, it, it, does, it, it does stay alive if he dies. Uh, the, it says that in the Aegis description. I was checking that. So we got that one right, at least. I'm not sure if it can take the Aegis. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, I can't say I have either. Might be an item that just only dedicated heroes can pick up if that makes sense but yeah it's, it's hard to say uh but i don't i don't fault you for it the bear has been obviously the, the big battering ram for the team and the most precious cargo lone Druid alone is just a, a cloak and boot <laughs> not a lot of fun yeah he really is okay. what do you even do when the bear is dead at this point <laughs> you, you can't risk walking up to your hero you don't do anything oh they jump on for stinger but He's able to blink out. Ice Blast, but obviously they were not able to lock him in a spot. Oh, now Stinger blink, blinks back in. Got that gem. So he knows that they were coming. God, that Torrent Storm ability is hilarious. It's easily the most chaotic ability in Dota. Yeah, quite you ridiculous. Just have no idea what's going on. And does it... Is the cooldown the same as Torrent? No, no. I was going to say. Oh, insane. adds just a straight new ability. Oh, 70 seconds. Yeah, I see. it's 70. Arrow on mini. Can they actually do anything with that? The Moonlight it's, it's Shadow. It is far. Uh, they don't like that. They got the obs down, but a sentry still stands. So this Moonlight Shadow is not really going to amount to too much on the offensive. They will backpedal and head up through the top lane instead. But, man, it is hard to penetrate the ridiculous defense that Beast Coast have been pulling out in this game. Keep seeing Furia try to throw themselves across the river and try to take it to Beast Coast, feeling like they are nearing critical mass. You're putting all your chips behind this Lone Druid and behind this Kunkka, and they've both got, gotten kind of all the items they really want. Like, Kunkka is pocketing a lot of money and hasn't lined up anything yet for his next item. I'm very curious to see what he's thinking about committing for. Maybe like a refresher, possibly? Whisper. Oh, big crit, but it's on the carapace, which stuns him in his spot. Nice. nice snowball save. Does come out from Heiko. Could cost him his life. The Eels is going to be there. DK swings in. He's got the Shivas, and they blow up that tusk. Jump in. Crush from Sexy Fat. Locks him in their spot. Minis there. Torrent Storm comes out. They pop their own BKBs. Chris Luck can't find a way to make it out. We'll have to take the Echo Slam with them. They also knock down Duster. Sexy Fat and Mini, though, eating a lot of damage, and they both could be falling here. Sexy Fat on the retreat. 
And uh, without the Lone Druid Bear, that goes down now. He is just on the run. This is a fight for Beast Coast. And they buy back. AA? Is he shooting the jumper? Did he shoot the he jumper? Is. There it goes. Woo! He's coming in. Here it comes from downtown. Oh. Still will hit sexy fat, let's, but let's hit them both. not going to get the finish. So they do, they do have the bear resummon, so that's that's all right. I mean, that he basically the bear respawned. That's yeah, only that's one bear, though. One bear. And look at Beast Coast. Confidently cut down to the bottom lane and start taking it to that tier three. Again, not the craziest amount of tower damage. They're looking to make it work. They got it down. Flicker. flicker seems quite good against the Sardar. What is this bear doing in base? Look at Analog's bear. Chomping away at AA inside oh, the base. Oh. He's trying to throw. If they kill it again, it's very devastating. Okay, no, he's going to TV out. Oh. There was escape from uh, Whisper there down below. Cool attempt. I, I'm a I'm a fan. I'm a fan of what just happened. Really <laughs> cool from Analog. He he just brought the entire Beast Coast lineup back. Like he was he was gonna lose his racks there, but with the bear threat, they have to be afraid now with the, yeah. these travels. Yep. Now they gotta keep that in the back of their mind. And AA's like, guys, I can't do it alone. <laughs> really? I'm not gonna defend against this bear. What do you want? <laughs> he has a the leveler too on the bear, so if he does manage to oh, start wow. getting thrown, he is going to die fast. Man, I gotta say, Lone Druid being able to have two neutral items, that's gotta be just such a great buffer for him and as opposed to any other hero in the game. It was crazy when you could hold, like, six of them. You just throw them all on a Lone Druid. Oh, and all of a wow. Yeah, that's right. Damn. It was it was not okay. That was, that Lone no. Druid was nuts. Yeah. He, he was like 65% win rate or something, <laughs> which is 5% higher than I've ever seen before. Just so many free items. All right, he's got his bear up top. Remember for the couple days where you could get infinity infinity items, you could just keep getting them. There was no limit on them. Yeah. You know, Frog just has to work things out. Sometimes yeah, in theory I... it sounds like it's it's all good and fine, but yeah, once they recognize that you could just perma jungle farm up items, uh, definitely pretty, pretty definitely made it for some interesting times. I feel like we're in a good spot with neutral items for now. As uh, Furia make their approach through this bottom lane, are they going to have two bears by this point? Looks like they will. They would love to get him to level 25, I'm sure. Radiant He's anticipating getting that spirit bear attack time. Imagine that would be quite yeah. juicy. Mixed to the high ground here, pops the carapace, looking to D ward if possible. Chase on for Duster, Duster BKB TP, and he's Almost out. Got him. Double damage. Yeah, I think that's why Analog is playing with his hero in the triangle here, just trying to get that level 25 as fast as possible. And his bear is playing with his team. Although he should probably drop that craggy coat if you're going to be jungling like this. If you really want that 25 that bad. Yeah, the attack speed is probably a bit more necessary if you're hoping to jungle through. Mini has been coasting from mid to top lane. He's got the DD. Stinger stalking him with the carapace, hoping he to commit something, but they scout him out. They hit him with a quick snowball, and Mini just knocks him out of the park. Long ice blast. Doesn't find too much connection. And now a jump in from Whisper. Whisper looking to take it to Sexy Fat. He gets hit with the stun, and they're going to have to settle for something else. They're looking to go for Analog's bear. Ooh, arrow the bear. Nice arrow on the bear, and that will be one bear down. And the resummon, just like that. But Send again, directly to bot. Lane management seems to be uh, very tricky here for Beast Coast, which you know is surprising. I mean, Necro, one of the best lane pushers you can ask for. Marana also pretty good at kind of at least taking out the creep wave. As she now has the tri arrow, it looks like. Big Reaper Scythe can't quit the full finish on the sexy fat, but it does help him take it down. Jump from Chris Luck as he leapfrogs to the low ground, gets the echo onto two. The two supports eating a lot of damage, but not quite able to get the finish there. They'll take down Duster. And they're looking for Heiko here. He's... Oh, no. Wait, wait what? That was, must, was that a Lotus Snowball? Lotus I guess yeah, so. Yeah. I, I jumped over to a Snowball, and suddenly Marana popped out of it, and I was very confused. There's Heiko. A new Snowball for him. Constant Torrent Storm coming out from Mini on the high ground, though. 
tries to slow them down, but uh, to no avail. Their two, uh, their two uh, Furia members are going to be sitting on the sidelines for nearly a minute without a buyback. Where are we on the Roche? It looks like Roche is up. Looks like Beast Coast are possibly heading that way. Well, they don't quite have enough people around to get this one done. But God, this Roche. Four items. Every single Roche item. Oh, the DD right in front of the pit. That is convenient. Okay. Who is getting what here? Do you have Chris Luck this Agnum Scepter? And that Refresher? Good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Refresher on Chris Luck. Refresher on DK doesn't sound that bad. Yeah, either. I was like, just going to say, maybe, nice. maybe him. You know, if he had a BKB, it'd be... Oh, cancel TP. Cancel the TP while they're pushing bottom lane. Chris Luck shows up, though, to try to stop down this bear. The bear, though... Commits in hard with the back of a BKB and gets that tier three down. Uh, cheeky stuff coming out from Furia. And that could be the tactics moving forward to try to go for closure. Nice torrent. Catches the two. Now the full storm. Mini BKB'd. On the retreat, the but sight. boom! Gets the scythe. He is out for 160 seconds without a buyback. Oh my Might as well be tomorrow. Meanwhile, yeah. Heiko gonna get finished from Whisper. They buy back. They want to defend this Roche, but without having Kunkka, that seems like it's going to be very difficult. Duster, though, he's like, I got to do something. He rolls in with the exorcism, gets the silence. Like this, this could be throwing. Well, I don't know. I mean, you have to fight this, right? Like, Yeah, it feels really costly to not have it, but maybe Duster just trying to cause chaos. Analog's bear is in that bottom lane, but true, already, true. They, they already have Chris Luck down there to deal with it. So they've pulled away entirely from the Roche. Chris Luck, though, still moves in confident and strong with his dunk, trying to take down Sexy Fat solo, but Sexy Fat makes it away, blinks away from the Ice Blast, and he's going to be good. Man, this bear is causing some serious problems. Analog is 100% keeping them in this game. He can just run past and go racks. Oh, although Chris Luck, he's looking for it. Ah, but this is... You know, they were hoping to have this Marana in the fights, if possible. Her having to be on bear duty does not sound fun. Oh, he uses the bear. The arrow, follow-up. Uh, does he have a resum? He does, of course. He's playing with the resummon. So. And they get a kill because of this. Oh. The space. I mean, this is a hard fight for Furia, too, though. Chase yeah, is on. Stinger gets a stun on the two. DK has the new ultimate now. Could send someone else out of this game. I mean, Kunkka is still dead for a minute. Good lord, he's been dead forever. Yeah, he's, not, <laughs> he's not playing this video I game thought anymore. I thought he died again, but I'm like, no, that's still the same death from before. And now you're going to be out of here. Two minutes. He does have a buyback. But can Beast Coast finally get in here and get this Roche down? God, playing against Necro at this point in the game feels so bad. When you have essentially three strength cores with the bear, with the Slardar, with the Kunkka. What a what a good hero in the, it is in this game. I love this. Stinger has the Agnum Scepter, so he's burrowed up as a turret. Spots out Duster, stuns him up, and they jump in to finish him off. Now Sexy Fat moves in himself, gets his own stun. They muscle down and finish off the Nyx, and now double buybacks are going to be in order here from the Beast Coast side. The importance of this Roche for both these teams as they fight tooth and nail to try to claim the Aegis in every item within that Roche's pocket for themselves. Dude, Sexy Fat just wanted to start hitting it. And oh, uh, he might pay for it. Nice two-man stun connection from the Knicks as he jumps to the high ground to get it done. Whisper scores the double kill, shooting down all in his path. That's going to be Duster's dieback. He's out for 100 seconds. Sexy, Sexy Fat also out for 100. Mini just got back from his huge hiatus in the grave. And he may go down yet again as they chase him down and pull him away from that Roche pit. He gets off the full torn storm. He gets off the boat. This man is trying to survive, and it looks like he may be able to keep his life. It costs him so much to get it done. Oh, Meanwhile, on the other side, they finished out the Roche. It was snagged up by Heiko. He stole everything. He stole the eggs. He stole the refresher, and he stole the edges. He's going to survive. Walks back and away, punches, and kicks back with the new kick. Takes Whisper to the, the low ground. Stole. Oh my god. But I don't think it matters. It looks like. Oh, he got him in the fountain. 
Oh, Lord. Holy shit. What the hell is happening over here? I'm trying to keep tabs on what is going on with Analog in the top lane. In the meantime, they continue to chase him down slowly. They finally, finally stun him up and take him out. No buybacks for anybody on the Furious side. Beast Coast run into the base to go for the finish. And they're finally going to call it. Oh, my God. What a fight from Beast Coast to stay alive in this one. And, uh, I mean, uh, props to the Tusk. He gets in there. I don't get the full steal action. I'm, I apologize for that. It doesn't really amount to much at the end. But, damn, that was a hell of a series. Certainly a topsy-turvy series. Very entertaining. Much more than I was going to expect what was going to initially be a forfeit. I got to say, uh, I'm really happy that we got to watch that one. Yeah, that was good stuff. That was really good stuff. Good, Ooh. solid Dota from from Beast Coast in in the last uh, the last two games. I mean, especially the last one. Just like the wraparound plays, the high ground defenses, the team fight coordination between Chris Luck and Stinger. I mean, it's obvious these two are teammates after watching this. It's it was so beautiful. And uh, you know, DK on Necrophos, that was it, uh, apparently according to the second game and how he performed in that. Looks like a comfort hero. Mm -hmm. He he fits really nicely on that hero, but. Good lord. I mean, Whisper, and I'm not, not even talking about Whisper, and he ended the game 20 and 7. So, great game. Great game all around. Yeah, Whisper had a hell of a day. He uh, showed up in the previous game. It was him playing the Earth Shaker, right? Oh my god, I'm only yep. merging these games. And he had a hell of a showing there. Chris Luck takes it over in this one, does a great job with the setup. Uh, you already talked a bit about DK. Certainly showed up in game two and three as a stand-in when they shifted around the positions a bit. Just a hell of a showing. You know, credit to Furia. Originally, it was going to be a forfeit from them, but they show up, they play. Uh, it's so crazy. Duster has the most kills on his team in that game by a decent margin, being 14 and 12 and 12 on the support death profit. Uh, and, you know, Mini stepping in for them. He definitely had some solid games, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm giving compliments all around. It was definitely a very entertaining series, an unorthodox one. You know, credit to Beast Coast. They'll be the team that do manage to walk away with the win. So, gauze all around for your Beast Coast fanboys. They uh, ultimately doesn't mean they're not going to progress in the tournament. They don't get to make it into playoffs. But uh, we hope to see both these teams back in the near future, and we hope to see them play more at their final form. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, well, that will do it for today's action. I'm going to quickly update all of the uh, little scores here. We can take a quick look at our final standings in the group stage. Give me a moment. Do, do, do. It's going to be Beast Coast who gets the win. It's Furia who gets the loss. That's now updated. I'll hit this button, and I'll hit this button, and there you have it, folks. That is the conclusion of the Beyond the Summit Pro Series group stage action. Congratulations to Quincy Crew. They make it to the group stage unscratched, going 7-0 and zero with their win against Crazy earlier today. They earned the first seed spot, and they are going to be going against business associates in that first round. Uh, and as you see, Beast Coast with that one win, at least get that one notch on their side. Let me go ahead and bring up our bracket. There we go. Uh, I think I have this correct. We have Quincy Crew going against Mrs. Associates. That's actually going to be our first match tomorrow at 1 p.m. PDT. And then we'll be moving right into Crazy versus Evil Geniuses. Tomorrow is a seriously hype day of some awesome American Dota. I'm certainly looking forward to. And uh, you guys should be too. And that will wrap things up. All right, Jenkins, it was an absolute pleasure to have you back again today. Uh, and I know I... Do I have you again one more time, I think? Or was no, that I it? I think that's it for me. All right. Well, you know, you never know Good. if I might need a quick stand-in. I'll definitely hit you up. But uh, if that is it, it has been an absolute pleasure. We'd love having you cast with not just myself. I'm sure Moxie greatly appreciated that you were able to join her on her BTS uh, Pro Series games. And uh, we wish you the best, everybody. Please, hearts in the chat for my man Jenkins over here. Check out his alchemy videos. Uh, if, if you uh, have a stream, make sure you go hit him up as well. And uh, Jenkins, thanks again, man. I hope you have a good time. Thank you, friend. All right, later, brother. All right, we say bye to Jenkins, and I'm about to say goodbye to you. I want to give props once again to Monster for supporting this event. It's thanks to them that we can continue to have all this awesome online content for the teams, for the talent, and, of course, for the viewers at home. 
Dota all day, every day, man. It's been a wonderful time in these very hard times that we've been blessed with the Dota. Tomorrow I'm going to be back. I believe I'm joined by Demon, and we're going to have those two hype matches. So thanks again, everybody, and uh, take care of yourselves. Stay healthy, stay strong. I'll see you tomorrow for more Dota action. Bye-bye now.